So incredibly grateful to be here in this moment and connecting with each of you as we talk about this Easter story through the mystical lens. And I want to start with what it was like for me going through ministerial school and what Reverend Jonah and I are now calling old school new thought, right? Which was the metaphysical teaching or the metaphysical interpretation of all of these stories. And so what I learned, and this is very, very interesting, I'm going to share what the difference for me is between the metaphysical experience or understanding and what the mystical interpretation or experience of any story and today the Easter story. So what I was taught, it's so fascinating, we would read the story and then we would go to this thing called the metaphysical Bible dictionary and we would look up what the words meant and then we'd rewrite the story. And I remember thinking, hmm, that dictionary was written a hundred years ago and the story was written thousands of years ago, and I was curious about that. I was really curious about this idea that I would simply look up a word and someone else would tell me what it meant to me, and then I would have a new version of the story. Thank you for laughing. <laughs> because it occurred to me at one point that it doesn't really matter so much what the story is, it matters what the story means to me in my own heart, in my own consciousness. And so that can be, right out of the gate, that can be a beautiful metaphor because we can look at our own stories. And then in the retreat this weekend, we took the Easter story and we asked the question, how do we bring this to life? So not so much a concept of what it might mean, but how do I actually embody this story and bring it to life in my own personal experience of what we once called reality? And many of us are waking up to recognize that that's the illusion. And so we can take that as a metaphor to simply looking at our own stories. We did a process on Friday where we asked people to pick up a really heavy bag of rocks. And they put them over their shoulders. Some people are like, this isn't so heavy. Right, Adam? So the idea of it was, what is this burden that we're carrying? What are we carrying around? Believing that because of this story, I am who I am. What happens when I recognize that it's not the story, but the meaning I've given to the story that creates the experience of what I call reality? And so Jesus the Christ, again, as Reverend Jones so beautifully said, that's a state of consciousness. Arlene brought the incredible book, The Second Coming of the Christ Consciousness, Swami Yogananda wrote that a long time ago as well, talking about the consciousness that is, for some, the Buddha nature, for some, Christ consciousness, for some, the light. And this emerged this weekend. I said, you know, this power that some of us call God doesn't have ears. So it doesn't matter what we call it. And if you came from some traditional religion, that might be a ooh. Because the power is the only reality. There is one power and one presence, and we come in as a perfect expression of that, and then we do get programmed, and we have this bag, and well-meaning people give us a little rock. <laughs> and then I pick up my own rock. <laughs> and someone says something to me, and I allow that to become my truth. Not the truth, but see, I believe it's the truth. And so some of my rocks I was carrying around were I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not worthy. And from that, believing that was the truth, I walked in the world carrying the vibration of unlovability, and I kept experiencing unlovability. I kept choosing, not attracting everyone, choosing relationships to confirm the core belief, not consciously. And so I'm going to have a very, hopefully a simple explanation of what the mystical interpretation of the Easter story means to me. It's profoundly simple. It means that as we consciously choose to move toward what we might call the crucifixion, because the story is Jesus consciously cho chose to go into that experience and then started with oneness, that Thursday experience. I anchor myself in oneness, and with that, I can consciously choose to take a look at the bag of rocks and ask myself, are these still serving me? And in what way are they still serving me? My worldview creates my reality, but only 100% of the time. 
And so if I'm not happy with the way the world looks, I can begin to look at the conclusions I have about the world and begin to work with that and then see what happens because life is a great experiment. So when we anchor in oneness and we consciously choose, because here's the thing, we are always choosing whether we know it or not. I am always choosing. I'm either choosing from the unconscious or the conscious. But there's even another option here, and that is anchoring in the superconscious. We don't talk about the superconscious a lot. And psychology doesn't talk about the superconscious a lot. It's very simple. We're talking about God, source, love, life, the deepest truth of who and what we are. So the second coming of the Christ consciousness isn't moving toward anything, as Reverend Jones so beautifully said. It's a great remembering of that which we already are. A great remembering. So we can consciously choose to move into taking a look at the limitations, the belief systems that have kept me feeling small. So as we discuss today, our greatest yet to be, we're talking about becoming the magnificent being of light that we are. As Anne Lamont says, I like this quote, and I use it often, lighthouses don't go looking for boats to save, they just stand there shining. Yeah. <laughs> and so, a few conversations that came up at the retreat that I would really love to talk about. One is this idea that new thought is kind of selfish. So if I'm not anchored in oneness, I think you thought that would be, be true. Because we talk about a lot about our own uh, transformation, our own evolution, our own resurrection, and how we can create our most magnificent light. In old school new thought, there's not a huge conversation about serving the world or being of service. And it's true. I don't hear a lot of it. But there's a new paradigm that's happening right now, and I'm so grateful to Dr. Beckwith for being part of that, to bringing a new new thought the new paradigm new thought, where we recognize that it is important that we serve the world, but the key is if I'm serving from my consciousness of brokenness, I'm gonna create more brokenness when I go out in the world and serve. I work in the mental health field and if I sit in front of my client and look for what's broken, what am I creating? Until I recognize my own light, as Marian Williamson says so beautifully, when we shine our light, we unconsciously give permission for others to do the same. So the resurrection is simply returning to that experience of the truth of who and what we are, recognizing that we are love and we are light. It's profoundly simple. It's profoundly simple. We allow ourselves, by anchoring in oneness, to have the courage, as Jesus demonstrated, going into his own crucifixion. Now, I'm going to go to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, because what I was taught was that the donkey he rode in on represented peace. And I like that one. That's cool. So I can be peace, anchor in oneness, consciously choose to take a look at what I might be ready to live beyond. To me, there's something fundamentally different in letting go than living beyond. I don't need to let go of my programs or let go of my beliefs. I simply recognize they are not the truth. And when I know that what I've been calling reality is the illusion, and what we've been taught is illusion is reality, everything changes. And so we consciously take a look at what stories, beliefs, and ideas we're ready to live beyond, and then we go into that place, as Reverend Jones spoke of, that represents the tomb time. We might call it a hallway. But the key here that's really interesting is being okay with not knowing is something for some of us that takes spiritual practice. For some reason, our minds try to create predictability in the outer realm. And guess what? What do we know about that? It's not really possible, right? Because I really don't know what's going to happen outside of me. But what I do know is when I'm willing to be in that place of inner stillness and allow this emergence of the new consciousness. And again, did you hear the word emergence? Yeah. Because it emerges from us as us. And as I take off the layers, that light automatically comes through. It's automatically who and what I am. And when I know that, and when I really live that, everything in the outer world changes, and that's the paradox. So Jesus came with a very simple message, as did many spiritual teachers, and that is love is all there is. 
And if love is all there is, we're shifting from being loving and being loved to being love in the world. So here's my not so great grammar. <laughs> Who are you being? What you be in the world yes. is what you see in the world. Yes. Right? And it's only 100% of the time. 100% of the time. So the Easter story is profoundly simple. It is simply recognizing that love is who and what you are. Light is who and what you are. You have a choice every single moment to know that and to recognize what you have put on top of that, consciously or unconsciously, that have changed or shifted the experience of that love. And when I shift, the world shifts. When you shift, the world shifts. There is a baby being born right now. And that baby is coming in with a new consciousness because of the evolution of our consciousness. So if you want to really talk to the sages and the masters, talk to a three-year-old. Seriously, we spend so much time talking to our children. What if we were to recognize that the consciousness, the pure consciousness, is that pre-programmed human? We might have a lot to learn by talking to, talking not to our young people, but listening to our young people. They have a lot to teach us. Not because it's something we don't know, but because they can remind us of who and what we are. So if you have a young person in your life, under five preferably, before they get too programmed, although you're, you're awesome too, we can look into your eyes, right? All of us are the pure child. And to me, that's the story. That's the story of Easter, that we can each at any moment, remember that truth. And we can consciously choose to take a look at what needs to be released and play with this idea that the story isn't what created who and what I am. But the meaning I've attached to the story creates what I call reality. And the fundamental difference is I have the power now, you have the power now to change your experience. In closing, what I want to say is a lot of people say to me, I can't change the past, it's what happened. And I'm going to just maybe controversially say, controversially say, <laughs> that's not true. Because stuff happened. I don't even know if it happened for sure. But I know what I believe happened. And I concretize that in my consciousness. And therefore, I have a point of view that has created my experience. So we can literally go back and take a look at what happened and change that story. Change that understanding. And we're not talking about a spiritual bypass where we're pretending like it didn't happen or it didn't hurt. Because one of the important parts of the crucifixion story is feeling the feelings very deeply. We're not bypassing what happened. What we're recognizing is it happened, it was a challenging or difficult experience. I created a worldview around it and now I'm experiencing that in the world. So the opportunity here is to go back to the story and take a look. What if I were to have a different conclusion about myself and the world based on this story? What if the Easter story is profoundly simple, but it's absolutely resurrecting, if you will, to the deepest truth of who and what we are, that we can let go of, let go of, live beyond the programs and the stories. Yes. And simply rest in that which we've always been. We can call off the search. So if you've been a spiritual seeker, I invite you to call off the search. <laughs> And look at the possibility that it's been right here all along, that it's always been the truth of whom what you are. And that at any moment we can choose to tap into, resonate with, and have that frequency be our experience. And then as Reverend Jones so beautifully said, when we do that, our experience in the outer realm starts to change. We start to open up to possibilities that we never knew were there. And then we say something like, look what I attracted. <laughs> so, we have shifted from the law of attraction to the law of radiance. 
My invitation to you as you embody this Easter story is to go out into your world, into your life, into your family, and yes, even into traffic. I can hear that one for myself. And recognize that you can be the light no matter what. We did a ceremony last night at the retreat where we had one candle that represented the light and we each lit our own candle and recognized that as each of us expresses our own light, it becomes brighter. But I asked everyone to pick up their candle and make a commitment to being a quality in the world and they each got to choose their quality. And for some, the word commitment had a lot of baggage. So if the word commitment doesn't work for you, how about willingness? Are you willing to play with the idea that you have everything within you that you need to rise to your own greatness, that your greatest yet to be is already who and what you are, and that we can simply be that in the world because life is a great experiment. And so my invitation for you is to go out into the world being love, being light, and being the God essence that you are, and watch what happens. It's magnificent. I know we know this. And because of this, our consciousness changes, and the baby being born right now, because how many babies have been born since I've been talking? A lot. They're coming in with this consciousness because we are expanding our consciousness. There's no greater gift we can offer the world than that.